Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain an action, adventure, fantasy film called Chaos Walking. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Humanity has expanded to the stars and found a new planet called New World. Upon arrival on the strange planet, a phenomenon occurred where all the men's inner thoughts become audible and, in some cases, visual. They dubbed this unusual phenomenon the noise. Todd is a young adult living in Prentistown, believed to be the only surviving human settlement on the planet. He was born on the planet after his parents joined an expedition to colonize the New World several decades ago. He walks through the woods with his dog Manchi. When he comes across the village preacher, Aaron, Todd tries hiding his noise from Aaron, trying not to think about sins he may have committed. Aaron commands Todd to show his noise, but Todd refuses. Aaron then hits him across the face and declares hiding noise is akin to being a woman. Todd answers he wouldn't know as all the women had died when he was still an infant. Todd heads to town, where the mayor's son, Davy, belittles him, calling him a misfit orphan. Then, Todd manifests a snake with his noise, causing Davy to fall off his horse. But, before they could fight, the mayor, David, arrives. Todd tries hiding his noise, only thinking about his name, and David commends the control he has over his noise, saying Davy could learn from Todd. Todd then heads home to his adopted family Killian and Ben, two farmers living together. They all share a meal, and Todd tells them how he feels a connection with the mayor. In outer space, a vessel enters the planet's atmosphere. The astronauts discuss the first wave of settlers and wonder if they've survived since they haven't established any contact with them. As they enter the planet's atmosphere, the noise takes effect, and the men start panicking. A fault occurs, and the vessel begins barreling through the sky in a ball of fire. The following day, Todd spots a stranger stealing from their barn. He and Manchi run after the stranger, but the thief is too fast. He follows the thief and ends up at the spaceship's crash site. He spots several graves on the ground and hurries back to town to inform the mayor. Todd then leads the townsfolk to the crash site and tells the mayor there could be a survivor, the thief. Todd says he didn't get a good look at the thief, adding that the thief didn't have noise. David then orders the men to find the woman survivor. Todd is shocked to hear David say it is a woman who had survived as he's never seen a woman in his whole life. Todd explores further and finds the woman hiding. He tries to calm the girl down, but his noise reveals his desire to call others. The woman runs, and the men chase after her. David manages to capture her after he manifests a fence with his noise, tricking the woman. They take the woman to town, where David tells her what has happened to them since they arrived on the planet. He explains the noise only affects men. The girl asks where the women are, and David tells her all the women had died at the hands of the planet's local inhabitants, the Spackle. A war had broken out between the settlers and the Spackle, which ended in all the women dying. The woman then tells David that she and the rest of the dead astronauts were part of a scouting expedition preparing for the second wave of settlers' arrival. David appears excited, asking when and where the ship would land, but the woman is hesitant to answer. David decides to talk to the rest of the townsfolk and leaves Davy to guard the girl. Davy can't resist disturbing the girl as he, too, has never seen a woman in his whole life. He starts looking through the girl's bag, and the girl tries to stop him, but he fishes out a gadget that lights up and starts shooting out lasers. David runs back to find that the girl had escaped. The woman crawls under one of the houses and hears Aaron and David talking. David plans to take control of the ship, ambushing it upon arrival, and Aaron says the woman is an angel sent from God to purify them of their sins. The rest of the men then mobilize, beginning a search for the girl. Todd enters the room where the girl had been and takes the girl's belongings. He returns to the farm, eager to begin looking through the girl's bag to look for gadgets, but Manchi starts barking. Todd discovers the woman hiding in their barn and contemplates turning her in but decides against it. He heads back out when a man on horseback arrives, searching for the girl. He notices Todd trying to hide his thoughts and surmises the girl must be nearby. He then leaves. Ben and Killian immediately understand why Todd is trying to hide his noise and enter the barn. They see the girl and assure her they won't harm her. They head outside and talk to Todd about what they intend to do with the girl. Todd says they can't surrender her to the mayor, and Ben and Killian agree to help Todd and the girl escape. Todd doesn't know where to go as he knows Prentice Town to be the only living settlement in the New World, but Ben reveals another settlement exists, Far Branch. Killian is worried Far Branch wouldn't welcome them, but Ben says Far Branch would welcome him if Todd is with the woman. Todd prepares to leave, and Killian advises him not to tell the people in Far Branch that he's from Prentice Town. Before they could go, David and the others arrive. Meanwhile, the girl is in the barn retrieves her bag and prepares to escape. She finds an old motorcycle, fixing it up with one of her gadgets, and gets it running again. Back outside, David demands Todd tell him where the girl is. He tries to keep quiet, but his thoughts start racing, revealing the girl to be in the barn. As the men open the barn, the girl speeds out on the motorcycle, and Todd chases after her. The rest of the men start shooting, and Killian is fatally wounded. Todd and the girl maintain their course, running from the pursuers. They run into a ravine, and both are thrown off. Todd's horse gets injured, and the girl's motorcycle is decommissioned. Todd tells the girl he's there to help, promising to take her to Far Branch. Thinking she'd find a way to communicate with the incoming ship and warn them of the ambush, the girl agrees to go with Todd. They start making their way towards Far Branch, and Manchi, the dog, catches up to them. 
Ben cradles a dying Killian back at the farm, and David forces Ben to reveal where they had sent Todd. Unable to control his noise, Ben shows Todd is headed for Far Branch. David then offers Ben a chance to redeem himself, asking him to help them bring Todd back. As Killian dies, he lets out one final thought, asking Ben to keep Todd safe. Todd and the girl take a moment to rest and eat. Then, Todd catches a creature from a lake and tries to start a fire. The girl helps by placing one of her gadgets near the woodpile, exploding, and providing a puff of fire igniting the wood. They resume their journey, and Todd spots a massive glow of noise in the distance. He tells the girl that the noise is coming from a band of spackles, the native species trying to wipe out the humans. They take a different route, avoiding the spackles. Rain starts falling, and they take shelter under a tree. Todd spots his mother's journal in his backpack, placed earlier by Ben. The girl reveals that her parents died too. They got sick on the ship during the voyage, and her grandparents raised her. The girl and Todd lock eyes before she leans in for a kiss. Todd kisses her back, but the girl vanishes into thin air. Todd is horrified to see that it was just his inner thoughts manifesting thanks to the noise. The following morning, the girl tries to wake Todd up and sees he is dreaming about her, his dreams manifesting visually, thanks to the noise. Todd is awakened, and the girl tells him her name is Viola. They resume walking and reach a cliff overlooking a spackle village. Todd pulls Viola and a barking man Chi to the side, keeping them quiet. They rush away but run into a lone spackle looking for food. They hide, but a panicked Todd's noise grows louder. He tries to quiet his noise down, but the spackle sees it. It pounces on Todd and starts dragging him away. Todd breaks free, arming himself with a knife. He charges the spackle, but it swats him away. Viola comes face to face with the spackle, the creature she was told killed all the women at Prentice Town, but the spackle only looks at her quizzically. Todd tackles the spackle down and starts stabbing it. Viola screams for Todd to stop, and he pauses. The spackle breaks loose from Todd and starts walking away. Later, Todd says he was only trying to protect Viola, but Viola noticed that the spackle didn't mind her, only attacking Todd. Todd remembers what the mayor said and what happened in the town, but Viola doubts it. They then come up to a clearing and find Far Branch. They enter Far Branch outskirts, and Todd notices Far Branch seems to be better than Prentice Town. They have livestock, a plantation, and mechanized farming equipment. Todd is shocked to see there are women in Far Branch, so much younger than him. The town mayor, Hildy, meets with them and Todd is shocked to see a woman. Todd is later confronted by several men, telling him men from Prentice Town are, by law, to be hanged. Hildy steps in before the situation escalates, handing Todd his knife back but telling him she'll be watching him. Viola and Todd speak with Hildy, and she tells them that they no longer have the technology Viola needs to contact the incoming spaceship. Viola says she needs to contact the ship because if they don't receive a signal from the planet, they would move on and leave her stranded. They hear Todd's noise saying he wishes Viola to stay on the planet. Hildy then suggests that they head to Haven, another settlement, where she hopes they would find the means to contact the ship. Todd is surprised to learn that there are yet more settlements in New World. Viola says he and Todd would leave in the morning, and Todd's noise reveals his desire to have Viola stay with him instead. They can hear Viola's voice from Todd's noise asking him to kiss her. Viola is insulted and storms out. Todd has trouble sleeping and visits Viola, who's having the same problem. Viola sees Todd carrying his mother's journal, and she offers to read it for him as he never learned how to read. Viola and Todd find out that everything Mayor David had told him had been a lie through the journal. It turns out that the men in Prentice Town slowly grew hateful of the women due to the noise revealing their thoughts. David and Aaron worked together and started antagonizing the women in Prentice Town. Aaron declared that the women have no noise because they are soulless. In her last entry, Todd's mother writes she will always love him. Todd realizes it was the men that killed all the women, not the spackle. He storms out, unable to accept that his whole life had been a lie. Soon after, the Prentice Town men arrive. The people of Far Branch prepare for a fight, but it is clear they are outnumbered and outgunned. Some of the men lay down their guns, thinking they would lose if they fought. Todd returns to Viola and Manchi, and they try to escape the town discreetly. Unfortunately, Aaron sees them, and Todd and Viola get trapped in a barn. David gets to them and brings out Ben to convince Todd to surrender the girl. Ben enters and reunites with Todd. Todd tells him he knows the truth about what happened to the women in Prentice Town, and Ben apologizes, saying he and Killian lied to him only to protect him, but he didn't give a good reason as to why they kept the truth hidden. He then offers to help Todd and Viola escape. Ben steps out, and Viola follows him. Viola then starts walking to David before disappearing. Ben had fooled David, using his noise to create a manifestation of Viola. Todd, Manchi, and Viola reach a river, but Aaron catches up to them. They get on a boat and start paddling away, but Aaron takes his horse into the river, getting closer. They reach some river rapids, and Aaron manages to gain on them. He reaches the boat, pulling Viola into the water, capsizing the boat. Manchi and Viola are thrown off, and Todd has to keep Viola afloat as she never learned how to swim. Todd and Viola reach the capsized boat, but Todd sees Aaron has captured Manchi. The preacher holds Manchi underwater, drowning him. Todd screams in anguish as he hears his beloved Manchi's whimpering gasps for air grow weaker and weaker. Todd and Viola wash up a fair distance away, and Viola could hear Todd trying to hide his noise, filled with thoughts of Manchi. They continue walking, and Todd swears he would avenge Manchi. 
The pair end up at a structure towering over the forest, and Viola remembers seeing blueprints of the structure back in her ship, saying it's for a monorail track. She then finds Todd sitting in silence, his noise manifesting a jolly man Chi jumping up and down, happily barking and running the fields. Seeing Todd distraught over the loss of Manchi, Viola sits next to him, saying she liked Manchi, telling Todd Manchi was the best dog she ever knew. Todd jokingly replies Manchi was the only dog she ever knew. Viola then holds his hand, telling him he is a good man. She then playfully tells Todd she's not going to kiss him, alluring to Todd's inner thoughts manifesting earlier. They continue walking and reach the remnants of a massive ship. Todd theorizes it must be the ship the first wave of inhabitants used. Viola then decides to go into the ship to find a communication beacon to signal to the second wave ship. They climb into the vessel, and Viola finds an emergency communication beacon. She powers it up and initiates it, but the antenna has been disconnected. Todd decides to climb up and reattach the antenna, but David sees him. The prentice down men ride in, surrounding the ship, and Todd successfully reattaches the antenna. The beacon is ready, but before Viola could turn it on, Aaron suddenly shows up, pulling Viola away. At the same time, David calls Todd, threatening to shoot Ben if he doesn't reveal himself. Meanwhile, Aaron has Viola pinned down, confessing to her how he had killed so many women, showing them no mercy. The noise had corrupted him, broken his mind. Now, he wants Viola to kill him to purify his sin. Viola takes a fire starter device from her pocket and throws it at Aaron, making him burst into flames. Aaron rejoices as he is being baptized in fire. He walks away, embracing his death. Viola shakes off the confusion and turns the beacon on. Todd faces David outside, but Todd still hides Viola's location. David then shoots Ben. Todd rushes to Ben, but Ben's injuries are too great. Ben pulls out a knife, handing it to Todd. Todd then uses the distraction to attack David, but David counters him. Todd gets pushed off, tumbling down. The beacon starts transmitting, and Todd runs to hide, but David shoots him, hitting Todd's chest. Todd hides under a metal part of the ship and sees David walking past. He tries to grab David, but it was only an illusion from David's noise. David then drags Todd, using his noise to confuse the boy. Todd is pushed near a large deep opening, and David holds him at gunpoint. With the remaining strength he has, Todd uses his noise to create an illusion of his mother. David sees Todd's mother and other women, and he gets scared, backing himself towards the edge. Viola appears from behind the illusion with a club, swinging it at David. David catches the club, but Viola lets go, causing David to fall over the edge. Todd awakens inside the spaceship with his wounds healed. He and Viola stand by the ship's window, seeing the second wave of settlers have unloaded. Todd and Viola hopefully watch as a new settlement is built. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.